20s, I stumbled my way in. And what I found is a secretive Christian organization called The Family that had been hiding in plain sight for over 80 years. This was a group with tentacles around the world. A humble example of leadership that the world has never seen. A breathtaking enmeshment of church and state. There were congressmen, senators, world leaders. And they say it's about faith, but there's a shared understanding that what we're really about here is power. I'd like to single out Doug Coe. Doug Coe and all of his associates. I'm grateful. Doug Coe is the longtime leader of the family. He's the most powerful man in Washington you've never heard of. He said the more invisible you can make your organization, the more influence it will have. Jesus plus nothing. It's a powerful thing. Using the National Prayer Breakfast, they dispatch representatives to build relationships with foreign leaders. That is exactly the kind of meeting that I would want to exploit. For the family, Jesus says you must go to those who are in positions of power. God always uses imperfect vessels to do his perfect work. President Trump's an imperfect vessel. Jesus is the answer, but Jesus and Capitol Hill don't mix. Because we want our family to stay together. I don't know if any of you brothers ever seen the show called The Family. Are you uh, brothers and sisters aware of that show? It's a show called The Family on Netflix. Any of y'all searching for truth, watch this show. And it's going to help you understand why this topic is what it is. Another Jesus. Okay. Uh, let's go to Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Shem HaMashiach Yahushai, giving thanks to the Most High Yahweh by Shem HaMashiach Yahushai. Now, as I was speaking about another Jesus, when we look through the scriptures, the scriptures talks about another Jesus. And a lot of people don't know that the Bible talks about two Jesuses. Okay, now we call him by the name of Yahushai. Okay, that's what we speak that we speak the ancient Hebrew when we say his name, Yahweh Shai. Some people say Yahshua, some say uh, other names, but we say Yahweh Shai for it's closer to his father's name, which is Yahweh. And the Shai at the end means saved, so we say Yahweh Shai. Now the world says Jesus, okay, and uh, that is a Greek terminology of saying Yahweh Shai's name, Greek. So if you, even if you were to say Jesus, Say if you were to, to, to hold that name close to you. You better say Jesus, Savior of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You better say that. I'm just going to put it more plainly because there is another Jesus. Uh, when you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Let's go there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. And it reads, For if he that cometh Preach of another Jesus whom we have not preached. Or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which he have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. You might as well stay with that dude. That's what you believe in. Stay with him. All right. So when it says, uh, though you may preach another Jesus, what we have to understand is there's an image that's all over the world that we're all familiar with. That image is, has a name, and the name of that image is not Jesus Christ. The name of it, or the person portraying our Lord and Savior, is Caesar Borgia. He's the one portraying to be the one the world calls Jesus Christ. And the reason why he portrays to be the one they call Jesus Christ is because you have to understand this, this Anglo-Saxon man. You have to understand this Caucasian man. They believe that their race is the most dominant race on the earth. They believe that the Bible is the most highest true word. They do believe that. They believe that they could step foot in the place where the Israelites should be. They believe as long as the Israelites are trodden down, beaten down, and lost without understanding that they could step into that position of being God's chosen people. And they could re-orchestrate re or rewrite 
history in the Bible by putting themselves as the Most High, by putting themselves as the people of the Most High. That's the whole purpose. As long as the Israelites are down. And they will not give them any foot or any way of climbing out of that basket to be a part of that system without them having shackles on them and controlling them. You have to understand this. But they believe that every leader that arises out of their pool is picked by Jesus Christ. Okay? So Caesar Borgia was the first image that was considered Jesus Christ, their leader. Remember, he sits on a throne. Yahushua sits on a throne. And he separates everyone who sits on his right hand and on his left hand. Let's go to Matthew 25. You have to understand the ideology of the people that we serve here in this country. And I, and I do mean we serve because we, we all pay Social Security. We all pay taxes. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. And it reads, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate one from another as a shepherd divide up his sheep from the goats. Now, we see this as a prophecy. But in today's times, the so-called so Caucasian man, the Edomite man that's in power, they believe that this is now. Understand what I'm saying? They believe that this is now. The, the Trilateral Commission, guess what? They are running the earth today. The Hoover, the, the, the Hoover Commission, they are running the earth today. So when they read this scripture, guess what? They're thinking about their leaders are sitting on their throne and separating the good from the bad. They have chosen people in their midst. People who run Congress people who are representatives, certain people in the military that run the military, they are their chosen people. That's why they can't do any wrong. They believe that when someone is chosen, whether they be a rapist, whether they be a criminal, whether they be a pedophile, that they don't have to listen to any of those crimes that they committed. Long as they are the chosen ones. As long as they're chosen by their leader, which could be the president or the king. As long as they're chosen, nothing can happen to them. That's why you see the chaos going on in the world today. When you watch TV and you see, oh, they, they caught this guy in the bathroom uh, molesting this young boy. And he's a delegate or a representative or some kind of man of clout. And he gets away with it. You wonder why. Because he's a chosen man in the eyes of of this Babylonian empire. The chosen ones that they that they pick, they are considered Jesus Christ. <laughs> I kid you not. They have a book. They have a book that every leader that they pick comes in the name of Jesus Christ. And so they push this image of Jesus Christ all around the world. When they first meet an enemy of state, if they meet someone like the president of Iran, uh, what was his name? That uh, Gaddafi. When they meet someone like that, they come in the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing come out of him, out of their mouth, I'm here in the name of Jesus Christ, the United States of America. That's the first thing they say. They do the same thing in Russia. They believe that they have the Christendom over all other countries. Russia was never a Christian. Uh, community. It was never a Christian country, but now it is. What you have to what you have to realize what Russia is. Many people don't know that 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 was actually the third Rome, Russia. Russia was it was after uh, it was after Rome and Constantinople. That was Russia, but then it got de-Christianized by the Ottoman Empire in Iran. And that's when they started to push that Tarsus Empire and expanding it all through Central Asia, Siberia, and the Caspian Basin, all through the Caucasus Mountains. That's when it changed. So since that time, which, would, which we would call the medieval times, up until this time, um, it's been ran 
being a non-Christian place. But now it's going back to its roots. It's going back to being the third Rome. It's trying to regain its Christendom. Look it up. Russia is now a Christian country. So they become Christians because they feel that they are ruling the earth in Jesus Christ's name. You got to understand the ideology is twisted. So that's why when we read the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 4, let's go back to it. This is crafty counsel. This is seriously <laughs> crafty counsel. And like I said, you can do your own research on this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For if he that come and pre preacheth another Jesus, why would there be another Jesus? Think about that. Why would there be another Jesus whom we have not preached? That means the disciples, prophets, no one taught about this Jesus. Or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received. Remember, the spirit that we're supposed to keep was to love the Most High with all our heart, all our mind and soul, which are what? Commandments of the 613 laws. Or another gospel, which ye have not accepted. What's our gospel that we teach? That the Most High is coming for his people, for the children of Israel that are scattered abroad. What's the new gospel that everyone can be saved? Everyone that believes in the name of Jesus Christ can be saved. So it's not like they don't use the Bible. They use the Bible to create their own crafty counsel and to brainwash the masses. So when you say Jesus Christ, they start smiling right away thinking that you're in the same name as them. But no, it's another Jesus that they worship. It's another Jesus. So we have to know which Jesus that they're talking about. Think about it. Did Yahushua ever come to push democracy? He never came to push democracy. But this country, a Christian country, so a country that believes in Jesus Christ, that has Christian stations all over the place on their cable channels, pushed democ democracy. Yahushua never came to push democracy. He came to teach his father's laws, statutes, and commandments. Let's go to Mark. The book of Mark. It's interesting because the foundation of Christianity is so huge that it's in every country. You could go to the Muslim community in other countries and say, "You would you like to pray in the name of Jesus Christ? And you know they will sit and pray with you. People are looking for salvation. People want salvation. So some people will uh, you know, whether they have another religion or not, and not being disrespectful, a lot of them truly don't understand the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments. They truly don't even understand their own religions that they're in. So when someone comes to pray with them, they jump right in. And like I said, it's a, a, a lot of naiveness. And then there's a lot of manipulating from uh I say this clergy or government that goes out and pushes this Red Cross syndrome to help people in, in the name of Jesus Christ. So what you have to understand, I have nothing against the original Christianity. And what I mean by the original Christianity, if you go into the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 26, Acts chapter 11 verse 26 reads, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. Antioch was a city uh, near Turkey on the, on, in the Middle East. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called. They were called. They weren't. They were Israelites, remember? But they were called Christians first in Antioch. They were called that because they followed the anointed one. They followed the Hamashiach. Right? They followed the Messiah who's called there in Greece or Turkey, Christ. So he was the anointed one. So they were 
the anointed, Hamashiach. So we have to understand that the original meaning of that word was for the Israelites because they walked as Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai did, teaching the Gospels, teaching the laws, teaching salvation for Israel. And we'll get into that as we go on in this topic. But not for the Roman Christians, the Roman Catholic Christians. All these different sects of Christianity are not with the same foundation and principles of the original Israelites. That's in the Gospels and in the Old Testaments. You have to think when it comes to this because the world has been manipulated to believe another Jesus. So this is what the delegates of this country, the spies of this country, when they go to other countries, that's what they do. They go in the name of Jesus Christ. And the first thing they throw out there is Jesus Christ. But it's not the Jesus Christ of the Hebrews. It is not the Jesus Christ of the 12 tribes of Israel, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what it's not. That's why you never hear them talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why you never hear them say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It'll be, all I need is Jesus. That's what they'll say. But which Jesus? Mark chapter 7 verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of the Most High, that ye may keep your own tradition. What's their own tradition? They're getting ready for Thanksgiving and Christmas in Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Did he ever keep these wicked holidays that, that they speak of? They talk about it in the church. You go to most churches right now or during the month of December and you'll see Christmas trees up on their altars. Not only that, they'll, begin, they'll have a Christmas play. They'll have a Christmas play in their church. They might have three or four or five or six Christmas plays within two or three days. And it will be jam-packed. And like I said... It's really all in naiveness. Our people are lost for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. All day, every day with our people. And I can't lie. I was a part of these Christian plays when I was a child. You know, my parents didn't know. They, they grew up as Christians. They were just trying to do the right thing. And they tried to do the right thing. Most people who are in these churches, I'm talking about the flock. The flock of these churches is just... They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to praise the Most High to the best of their ability. Nobody's never came around with information that they were Israelites. Nobody ever came around to tell them why slavery happened, that it was prophesied in the Bible in Deuteronomy 28 68, that we would go into captivity by slave ships. No one ever told the natives of the South America, Central America, that they were Israelites. That's why they fell to the Catholic churches. Okay, down in South America. You see most of our brothers down there of the Northern Kingdom in the Catholic churches. Because that's those were the conquerors, the conquistadors. So it's the same thing with our people, you know what I mean? So um that's why we have a lot of work to do teaching our people. It's a lot of layers that we have to peel off. Off, uh, off of their mentality because no one has never penetrated it. No one has never gave them the gospel, the true gospels. I mean, how so are we here in America the way that we are? We didn't ask to be brought here. We didn't do anything to these people for them to treat us so bad. We didn't ask for these names that they gave us. Right? Our last names, we didn't ask for this stuff. They gave it to it. They forced it down our throats. This is this is the real deal. This is no lie to it. Well, I'm supposed to sit here and say that that um, we wanted this. We didn't want this stuff. They beat it into us so much that we envied it and we wanted it. Now we want it without any shackles. We want what they have without shackles because we think that that's heaven. That's not heaven. The things that we see that they have is not heaven. 
family. We think it's heaven because they seem at ease. They seem at rest. They seem peaceful. But they struggle too. They struggle with the things that they created. They created this wicked society. They struggle with this society even though they get handouts and perks. Some of us are able to get those perks. But, you know, to die without knowing the truth, was it really all worth it? To die being peaceful and restful, not knowing the truth, is it really worth it for your soul to die in, in hell? Is it really worth it? The Most High is coming to destroy. He's coming to destroy all the things that this place has put in order. Even the name of Jesus Christ that they push. That's not of his son standing or sitting on the right hand side of him. He says, when he sends his son back, these people are not going to know him because he is not coming back as a man. How is it that they're not going to know him? And why is he coming back to bring judgment? Because of the evil of this world. So we have to really think. And our people fall for the okie doke all the time. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So what Jesus are they praying to, man? This is a heavy topic because just the name in itself bamboozles our people. Just the name in itself. That's why we always say Yahweh Shai, so you can't go backwards. It's the reason why we say Yahweh Shai. Because if we say Jesus in their minds, they go back to Christianity. So when we say Yahweh Shai, they can't go back to Christianity. They have to say, what do you believe in? We say the God of the Hebrews. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why we say Yahweh Shai. If we say Jesus, they're going to think that we're just like them. So what we teach has an explanation. Because if they say Yahweh Shai, they, the first thing they're going to say, what does that mean? Why are you saying Yahweh Shai? It has a, that gives us room to give an explanation for our salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Mashiach Yahweh Shai, or Jesus Christ of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right? No other man can lay this foundation. They can't change the foundation. It's already been laid. It's laid out in the scriptures. Let's go to verse 10. According to the grace of the Most High which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. You got to be careful with this. You can't just build anything on this foundation so we got to go back to what the prophets taught what did the prophets teach the prophets yelled all day long saying keep the most high's laws keep the sabbath day that's what they taught let's go to second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 it reads for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who's going to be taken out of the way? Satan and his people. That mystery is already at work. That evil mystery is already at work. And then shall they, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Most High shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. If they were teaching a proper gospel, why would Satan need to be removed? How is Satan still on the earth if this place is ran by delegates who believe in Jesus Christ? Or a president who is the prophet? Well, today they call President Trump. They call him the end prophecy. He is their prophecy. Do you understand? He is their prophecy in full circle. He is the reincarnation of Jesus Christ in their eyes. He is the goat in their eyes. He is in there. Have you seen them remove him? No, because he is the chosen one. Nothing can happen to him. He was chosen to be president. 
Nobody voted for him to get in the office. <laughs> but he was chosen. Who chose him? So he is the reincarnation of their Jesus Christ, of their Caesar Borgia. Nothing's going to happen to him. It says, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Lying wonders. So there we call this the Antichrist, but they call it Jesus Christ. See, would the Antichrist call itself the Antichrist? No, he's going to call himself Jesus Christ. Think about that. And everything he push is going to be Jesus Christ. Even him who's coming is after the working of who? Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In them that perish. They perish. I was walking by a cemetery today. I was on the phone with Barnes all this morning. I was just strolling through. Every once in a while it's nice. It's, it's good to just walk through a cemetery and just think about things and look at how how long people lived on this earth. I was walking through an Edomite cemetery, beautiful cemetery. And their sepulchers, I kid you not, I was reading the, the, the number of the years that most of them lived and it was from 1880 to 1920, 1880 something to 1925. All of them were dying around the same time when I was looking at their headstones. It was unbelievable. Most of them didn't live to be even 50. But the most I says is that the wicked perish like a shadow. And I'm sitting there looking at all these headstones and I'm like, wow, these people don't live long. You know, they perish, but they leave all their goods to their children. And they rule the earth. All right. uh, verse 10 and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved so the love of the truth is what? Psalms 119 so if they're really teaching the gospels if they're really teaching about Yahweh then they would know what the truth is but no they come in the name of Jesus Psalms 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So we know what the truth is. We know what the truth is. And thy law is the truth. And, and what did Yahushua come to preach? He came to save his people. And how was he going to do that? Teaching them the truth. Okay? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to John 3 and 17. So if you don't believe in him, yes, we got to believe in a Jesus Christ and a Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. The one that comes of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have to believe in him. But for those who hear this, doc, this, this, uh, this doctrine, what we're teaching, and say, see, that's why I don't have to believe in Jesus Christ. You got wrong. You have a hard time understanding what we're teaching right now. We're trying to show you there is a difference between two Jesus Christes. There's one that is an Antichrist, and then there's one that's an actual Hamashiach Yahusha. And if you don't believe in him, this is the end for you right here. John chapter 3, verse 17. For the Most High sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. What world is he talking about? The world of Israel. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of the Most High. So, Amashiach Yahweh Shai is the son of the Most High. And if you don't believe in him, you're condemned. You're done. You're dead. Remember, he came to save his people. So all these Old Testament Israelites got to understand that they don't have a foot, to, they don't have a foothold to step in without Hamashiach Yahweh It's a waste of time to even read the Old Testament if you don't believe in Hamashiach Yahweh It's a waste of time. So do we push Hamashiach Yahweh Yes, with the commandments. With the commandments. You have to believe 
in order to be saved. You have to do them both. That's the different. That's the what. That's why the gospel is different from what Esau pushes. Keep the commandments because that's the truth, and follow Hamashiach Yahushua because he will save us. Um, let's go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Can you brothers and sisters hear me? Okay. Come, come, come. Come. All praise. Come, come. Come. Second Timothy chapter two verse nineteen. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Most High standeth sure, having the seal. The Hamashiach knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Hamashiach depart from iniquity. See, you still gotta have his name. But see, Esau uses this. It's a cold word. Like I said, Esau could go into every country. He could be feuding with the country. If he goes in there and says, hey, let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Or I come in the spirit of Jesus Christ. That feud stops. And it almost appears as if they're rolling with Hamashiach. But it's the power of the United States of America. <laughs> it's the power of of the great Ro Roman Empire. That's what it is. It's not the Hamashiach Yahushua. That's what it is. It's a cold word. Let me tell you, these men that go to these different countries travel without passports and without visas. They travel like ghosts, like angels on these planes into different countries. They're not even supposed to be there. And they show up in the name of Jesus Christ to fix things as hitmen. Or death angels. And they go right back to the United States. Now, I'm not making this stuff up. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. There's no trace of them. A lot of power in this country. If this ain't Babylon, I don't know what it is. If this ain't Babylon. Isaiah chapter 8. That's what I said. The Most High has to clear our minds as Israelites because a lot of Israelites, we're doing the same thing we did in the wilderness. We're too busy bickering, fighting over little things. And that's spiritual too, brothers, not to be able to see past that. When Yahweh Shai said, let me show you something real quick. Let's go to John 10. Just to touch on that real quick. Yes. Book of John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10, and verse 16. And it reads, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Okay, that right there pissed off the Pharisees. They were mad at that. Just because he said what he said. They didn't want to deal with Yahusha no more. Because he said he was going to go and talk to the other flock. Let's go to John 7.35. And it says, Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles? And teach the Gentiles? If he's going to teach the Gentiles... The dispersed amongst the Gentiles. I mean, he don't know what they look like. You see what I'm saying? It's more than just looks. You can't say that, okay, only the Negroes that got woolly hair are the Israelites. It just don't make sense. It don't make sense anymore. Yeah, there might be some of us, but hey, you got Ham. Ham, the Ethiopians got woolly hair too. So you're trying to say everybody got woolly hair are Israelites? Oh, the Most High done mixed it up so much that brothers and sisters can't distinguish who is who just on our side. That's why he says we walk by faith and not by sight. When we get into the kingdom, it's going to be the other way around. But right now, we walk by faith and not by sight. So you can't be judgmental in that aspect or you will be stuck. He will allow you to stay stuck. And brothers don't teach nothing on the spirit anymore. It's all about nationality. Is nationality important? Absolutely. 
But if you're stuck on just nationality, how is the spirit ever going to thrive through you? You're never going to know what the spirit is talking about. You got to have the spirit to understand what Yahushua came for and what he taught and how to love your brothers and sisters. All right? So, it's just the way it is. Let's go back to where we was going to go. Uh, Isaiah 8. That's the problem with our people. And it's almost to the point where you call yourself black. We're not black. But they're quick to say we Africans. Or we have Afros. Afro's not in the Bible. The most I said he had hair of pure wool. <laughs> you say Afro when well, you call yourself African. You call yourself Ham. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah 8 and 15. Let bygones be bygones. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. That's our people. That's why he says in the next verse, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Don't worry about all that other garbage. Just bind the testimony up. Seal the law. A lot of our people are going to be broken. They're going to fight each other. They're going to hate each other. Oh, you're not a Negro. You can't be an Israelite. you hating on your brother right there. How are you going to get past the first level to get into the spirit for your house out to crack your cranium and give you something more? Acts chapter 8 verse 15. Who, when they were come down, Pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. That's what we're doing for these brothers like that. Brothers and sisters. There's sisters like that too. They get stuck following these other brothers that teach that same way. That's why he says, pray for these brothers that they receive the Holy Spirit. See that? Let's go to Acts. Uh, hmm. The crazy thing is, this government is so corrupt, but they do things with a smile and with power and with hidden agendas. Let's go to uh, the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 4 verse 12. Uh, let's go to chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. And let's read verse 7. Galatians 1 and 7. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Hamashiach, Christianity. How many different religions in Christianity? Over 125, if not a thousand Christianities. Okay? You could go on and on with. You can just Google it and find out how many types of Christianity is out there. How many different sects. That's why we have to be careful. It says, but it says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Hamashiach. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Our people are following gospels and uh, uh, different types of religions, all in the name of Christianity. Pentecostal and Jehovah Wickedness and, you know, all these different religions. Let's go to uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 4. Galatians 2 and 4. And that because of the false brethren, unawares brought in, who came privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Hamashiach Yahushai, that they might bring us into bondage. What did they teach us when we went into actual bondage? Jesus Christ. They didn't teach us to keep the commandments. They said, obey your masters. That's all they taught us. Obey your masters. 
and it teaches nothing else. We have been enslaved for over 400 years to this false doctrine. When we've been loving our enemies and them and hurting us, mocking us, and killing us for years. This can't be this can't be the gospels. It can't. Not what they're teaching us. And now we know. Galatians chapter 5, verse 10. I have confidence in you through Hamashiach that you will be none other wise minded. But he that troubleth you shall hear his judgment, whosoever he be. Now, the, the, these nations meet every year. I'm not sure if you brothers and sisters ever heard of the National Breakfast Meeting that happens every year. Every president, every king, every delegate, every mob boss, every gang member that's, that's of power from different countries, I'm talking about these leaders, all meet at this Christian breakfast meeting. National breakfast meeting. It's, it's a Christian national breakfast meeting. What's the agenda in there? Jesus Christ. You can Google it. All they talk about is Jesus Christ. Everybody shows up. Everybody who has clout shows up. They all meet there. You got Arabians meeting there with, uh, and you got East Indians meeting there with wearing saris, and you got everybody meeting there. And all they do is build alliances there. They listen to Jesus Christ the whole day. But they just build alliances at that meeting. This is how President Trump can travel to all these different countries and be treated well when he gets there. All these deals they're making at the breath, National Breakfast Meeting. This is what they do every year in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Everything's in the name of Jesus Christ. They use someone with power to bring forth their power. You see? They say if Hitler had used Jesus Christ, he would have ruled the world. You see? The sword of Longinus, Longinus who pierced Yahweh when he was on the cross, it was said that the blood that came out of Yahweh cleared Longinus' mind of sin. And changed his life forever. Now that particular sword. I've talked about this before. That sword has been in so many leaders hands. It was last found in Hitler's hands. Hitler believed that as long as he had that. He could rule the world. Now it's in the United States hands. So they believe in Jesus Christ in every aspect. What he touched. What he wore. The garments. The shroud. They believe that Jesus Christ. Or Yahweh HaMashiach had power. And so if they could just touch or have a piece of them, they would have power. And so now the United States have gotten crafty by using the name of Jesus Christ as their power to rule the world. You get what I'm saying? Now do you understand? They don't need to have a vice or a tool. They have Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ. They will rule in power with that name, Jesus Christ. That's why when you read Psalms chapter 50, let's go to Psalms chapter 50. And let's go to uh, verse 16. Psalms 50 and 16. And this is for Esau. This is written specifically for Esau. But unto the wicked the most I saith, who's the wicked? Esau. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou should have taken my covenant in thy mouth. Seeing thou hateth instruction. They don't like the law, statutes, and commandments. And casteth my words behind thee. That's what they do with this. They just want to believe in Jesus Christ. When they teach in their sermons, what do they push? Do they push the law, statutes, and commandments? Do they push the precepts? No, they push Jesus Christ and stories of the Gospels. When thou sawest a thief... Then thou consenteth with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. That's the national breakfast Christian meeting that they have every year. They meet with criminals. Verse 19. 
Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. That's what they do. They're judges. They like judges. They like all these different officials to frame deceit amongst the poor. Thou sitteth and speaketh against thy brother, who's Esau's brother, Jacob. It says, Thou slander thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. See that? Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself. They thought that Jesus Christ was just like them. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. He's going to set Esau in order before us. He's going to tear Esau in pieces when he returns. Y'all understand? For making a mockery by teaching lies. That's what he's done. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and 10. Galatians chapter 5 verse 10. I have confidence in you through the Most High that you will be none other wise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment who whosoever he be. Whosoever. That's no escape. Whoever bring of judgment or give us problems the Most High is going to deal with them. Let's go to Luke. The book of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And let's go to verse 70. It says, As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. Like we just said. In Psalm chapter 50. What did he say? He threw off his words behind us. And he condemned the poor. He framed up deceit against the poor. And from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Whose fathers? He, if he was talking about everybody's fathers. He wouldn't have to put ours. Talking about the Israelites. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father, Abraham, that he would grant unto us, who's to us, the Israelites, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. We have enemies that give us no clout. They put us in traps. Chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 verse 15. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if and if anything you be otherwise minded, the most I shall reveal even this unto you. He's going to reveal all things to you. If you feel that you're in the wrong religion, you're in Christianity or Islam, the most I is going to reveal it to you. He's going to take, bring you out of that. He's going to have you question things. Let's go to Acts chapter 15. This whole world is being ran by the Antichrist right now. Yahusha has not returned yet. So therefore it's being ran by the Antichrist. Acts chapter 15 verse 24. Acts 15 and 24. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us had troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazard hazarded their lives for the name of Hamashiach Yahushai. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, 
ye shall do well. What is this talking about? The laws of the, of the Most High. Not to defile yourselves with meats offered to idols. We already know that there's a law involved with that, the dietary law. Fornication. We already know that there's a law not to follow other gods. So these men, they all taught the same thing, and they taught keeping the laws. So in 325 AD, when you had Constantine come in to play, the Council of Nicaea, what did he do? He changed everything, saying you can eat whatever. Council of Nicaea, that's what they did. He said, stay as you are. You can still keep your holidays. You can still do what you always did. Just believe in Jesus Christ. They changed the gospel. The Roman emperor assembled this meeting to change the gospels. To change the understanding of the law of the Bible. That's when it changed. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. We have to understand, we've been following a lie for a long time. And... It's, it's kind of puzzling and and uh, it's, it's puzzling and confusion to a lot of people who are in Christianity for us to come to them with this type of information and, and tell them they're following another Jesus. It will baffle them. They'll think that you're Satan. Totally following a different gospel. I want y'all to hear the brothers in the back. They say that Jesus is black. But Kanye worshiping another God. He's worshiping the Jesus of America. He's not worshiping Jesus of the Bible. Jesus of the Israelites, the Savior of Israel. He's worshiping Jesus of the Roman Catholic Church. And Kanye knows by worshiping that that he's going to get power in these countries. But not everlasting life. It's not coming through another Jesus. Only Yahweh Shai, Yeshua, or the Israelites. Okay? But the brothers in the audience are telling them, you were too far for you were too far. Jesus is black. Listen to him. So that's all I need from you to show people the light of the truth. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Billy Graham. Apostle of Christ, is he? False prophet. Deceiving the world. Right? T.D. T. D. Jakes. Deceiving the world. Creflo Dollar. Deceiving the world. The world of Israel. Let's go to Galatians. It's a mess. This place is a mess, man. <laughs> it's a great mess. We've got a lot of straightening out to do. And one thing about different ideologies with this nation is when you become a club and worshiping the Most High, you become the enemy. That's why I always say, that's why we put our stuff on the internet. Anyone who want to listen can listen. We're not hiding nothing. It's open to the world. Your house I didn't hide nothing. We're not hiding nothing. We're speaking the true gospels. So we're not saying that, you know, you can't listen. That it's not open. We're not hi we're not hiding our ideology be between three or four people who think the same way. We're not doing that. We're sharing it with the world to wake them up. Maybe some Israelite communities are like that, where they don't want nobody to join them or anything like that. Closed off, door shut, don't want nobody coming in. But no, not us. We're not afraid of the Gospels. We're teaching the Gospels. So here at Lions Road, we're going to teach the word of the Most High, Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach Yahushai. To show that there is a difference. 
that we stand for the truth. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that call you into grace of Hamashiach. Don't be removed from Hamashiach. Teach the Gospels. Teach the true Gospels. It says here, unto another Gospel. No, we're going to teach the true Gospels. We're not going to teach another Gospel saying, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and that's it. That's not enough. That's enough to get you to the door, but not through the door. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7 and 22, uh, 7 and 21, Matthew 7 and 21. Now, if we are all learning the right gospels through Christianity, why would he say this? Matthew, these are for people that so-called believe. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Hamashiach, Hamashiach, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what gospel are they teaching? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is the will? Keeping his laws and teaching his laws. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Hamashiach, Hamashiach, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? These are those who preach another Jesus. And in thy name done many wonderful works. They feed thousands and thousands of people. They got turkeys coming from everywhere on Thanksgiving. They're giving gifts on Christmas to the poor. They're giving bikes to those who never had bicycles. They're doing all these things in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Miracles. Oh, we're giving you free health aid for the next two days. Free dental work for the next two days. In the name of Jesus. Praise God, you're doing such a wonderful work, such a blessing. You're going to be blessed. Okay? These are the miracles, the wonderful works that they think they're doing. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See that? That's what he's going to say. We have to do the Most High's will, which is keeping the commandments. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. Galatians 2 and 4. And it reads, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, vocab Malone, spying us out privily, right? Which we have in Hamashiach Yahushai that they might bring us into bondage. They want us to be back in bondage. Man, you learning the wrong gospel. He never said to keep his law, statutes, and commandments. That's why we have Jesus here. You ain't got to do that no more, brother. You can eat pork. You don't say nothing about not eating pork in the gospels. Alright. They're trying to get you back into the bondage. Galatians chapter 5 Galatians 5 and 10 I have confidence in you through the most high that you will be none other wise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be hmm, drop down to 12 I would they were even cut off which trouble you the most high is going to deal with them Okay, all of those after Constantine who are pushing these different conversions of the Bible, the Most High is going to take them out. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Book of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 36. Jeremiah 23 and 36. And the burden of the Most High shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. You say, Jesus, Jesus, that's going to be your burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living power of the Most High of hosts, our power. See that? They're perverting the Most High by being in darkness. See, they dwell in darkness. That's why he said we, we're stumbling. We're like stumbling blocks, our people. Let's go to Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. 
Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, is because there is no light in them. Remember, the light is the law. Psalms 119, 142. What's the light? The law. Hmm. Can't get around that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. So yes, they are teaching another Jesus. Oh, brothers and sisters recognize. Going into the lake of fire. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. I pray that they get it right before it happens. For there shall rise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. You see the false prophets on TV now. They got false prophets on TV, y'all. They be proud. They be looking all sweet and be wearing these nice suits and, you know, clean shaven. And they come to bring a word of prophecy and the word of prophecy is prosperity. You know, that's what they came to bring. And so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. They're deceiving our own people. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Book of Isaiah chapter 9, chapter 9, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. So why to say the ancient and honorable? That means you have to find the ancient ways. You got to find the ancient ways. To be honorable. What are the ancient ways? Go back into the scriptures. Jeremiah 6 and 16. He's showing us a road map. To be righteous. Jeremiah chapter 6. And verse 16. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus saith the most high. Stand ye in the ways. And see and ask for the old paths. The ancient ways. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. That's our people. They don't want to walk in the ancient and honorable ways. They don't want to walk that way. They want to follow lies. They want to follow the tale. That's what they want to, that's what they want to do. You got to remember the prophecy of Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy. What did the Most High say we would be if we kept his ways? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13. Deuteronomy 28 and 13. And the Most High shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Most High. Thy power which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So he's being plain. He's telling us how we're going to be the head. Is to follow the ancient and honorable ways of what he told Moses to tell us. Keep the commandments. Hearken to them. Listen. They ain't teaching us that with the other Jesus. It's another gospel. It's not the gospel of our forefathers. It's not the gospel. Our people need to wake up and smell a cock. We ain't teaching wrong. We teach it right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Verse 14. And the scriptures read, For many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. That's why people get the spirit, Oh, I'm going to teach the name of Jesus Christ. They've been called, but they've been called not to teach the true gospels. They went to the wrong teacher. They're following the tale. They're following lies. They may have been called to teach the Gospels like us, but they're following lies, and so they're going to teach false prophecies. Only few are chosen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to end with this chapter. Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to read five verses, four verses. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 5. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Jesus. I am Christ. That's what they do. 
United States of America, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many Christian, Christian com companies, many Christian companies are rising. They're all over the TV and YouTube and everywhere. Matthew 24 and verse, let's go to verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The Most High is going to come and save those who follow the ancient and honorable ways. Let's drop down to 25. I want to end with this. Behold, I have told you before. He already told us. Keep the commandments. Don't fall after these false prophets. So there are two different Christs. Be careful not to follow the Christ that the world follows. It is the leaders of America who is their Jesus Christ, the Antichrist. Scary, but truth. And with that, I'm going to end it there. Are there any comments, statements? This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 